Mr. Jones. Here. Gwaltney. Here. <coughs> Smith. Here. And Harden is out. So you got two. All right, so we've got a, we've got a quorum. Okay, uh, for the meeting on October 21st, we have a motion to dispense with the reading of those and approve Second. them as distributed. Second. <coughs> so moved by Councilor Smith, second by Councilor Gwaltney. Any other questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Three to zero, that passes. Moving to old business, 08, 09. 24 request to set bid date for October 29th for fire station number three edition, uh, Chief Broadhead. And uh, we have a report. You open the bids. Uh, Actually, I did not open the bids. Oh, Barry okay. Davis opened yes. the bids. Okay. I assisted. So, Chief, there. you want to okay. give us a report? Absolutely. We had three bids. Uh, the lowest bid coming in at 409 476. I sent that out to the Finance Committee by email with the okay. certified copy for all the bids. Um, that's right on. The bottom side of where our budget was, we had between 400 and 425 as our project cost. Um, one of the things that it occurred to me when I met with JJ and Lester is that you guys probably don't, we didn't share with you how we came up with this project. So I think it's important that you know kind of where this started. And I'll be very, very brief. Brian, could you throw up the picture of station three? When we evaluated the stations and kind of some of the additions, we know that station two needs to be replaced. We don't want to put any money into it. But we, station three, on the other hand, we need to make work for probably the next 10 to 15 years unless there's some foreseen replacement. So this is what we're looking, this outside wall right here is what we're looking at adding to the other side. So that second bay normally has a reserve engine in it that's out right now. You'll see where the truck is there. Those red things are the gear lockers. Next picture, Brian. So it gets extremely close between that gear locker and when they open those doors, along with this hose, which is our exhaust capture system, drags the top of those lockers. That is what started this. Hey, we need to look into a method to move these out of this bay, which all of our stations are that way except for station one, um, and put them somewhere else. That sparked, we need a storm shelter after the last set of you know, tornadoes that we saw. Our thought was that we put those two together. You're not gonna use a storm shelter very often. Turnout gear room gets used about three times a day. So we put them in the smallest room possible, which would save us the most. So that is our goal for the plan, is to move all of this out into that side that we built. This is just one of the multiple renovations that we're gonna need to do at this station over the coming years to make it last another 10 to 15 years. Um, the bedrooms are all, uh, it's been about 18 years since we did the last addition, and that was the kitchen. That would include the plumbing problem that we talked about, but to do that, we've got to get a space that we could make potentially temporary quarters before we can come in and gut the bedroom area and renovate it. The good news is it's a trust building so that the interior walls are not structure so we can just take it out to an open space and rebuild the interior portion of those bedrooms, bathrooms, and kitchen. So that is kind of what led us into this is the step one for that station. When we talk about station two, we had a contractor come out and they said the same thing is it's not worth renovating. Station two needs to come down. It was 4.6, I think. It was in 2019. It was 4.6 to renovate it, and I think, no, I'm sorry, 3.7 to renovate, like 4.6 for a new one. Didn't make sense. Um, so we're trying to outfit this station to keep us going for another 10 to 15, unless there's some plans somewhere maybe to replace two, but I realize that is a huge ask on our part of the finance committee and the city. So. We did have a couple of things. You asked me about deductions, particularly about ways to shave costs. Yes. If we get rid of the pre-finished aluminum canopy, which would cover the generator and the canopy, we can deduct $13,318. Slow down. How many get rid of what? A canopy. All right. Can you go back to the main plan, over, Brian? Over, it's over the gen yep. generator. Right there. There is a canopy listed in here that will cover the fuel tank and the generator. Our thought was, while we were building, if we extended that out, it would just help to have it all covered, like with the equipment. But it's been there for that way forever. So we can deduct a little over $13,000, and I'll give you the sheet too so you don't have to, um, if we take that out. The other thing that is in here, and Barry, correct me, I asked Barry to come because I'm definitely not the construction expert. Um, there's $20,000 in our current bid for unforeseen conditions, $2,500 for aid to construction, and then 50 cubic yards of unsuitable soils. So all those are things that we could have to do or we may not need them. Part of the reason this one was so expensive is where the 
transportation sets. It is on clay, and we had to build pylons down and grade beams to make sure it could support the weight and that we're not going to have foundation problems in the future. So, but so your soil there, clay should be good soil. Depends on what kind of clay. clay. It's plasticized clay. It's not. That's the wrong clay. That's that's a bad clay. We're built on a swamp. So. And the old station or the sta current station now has grade beams and piers already in it, so we know the soils are bad there. So we basically mimic that with that, okay? In that con in the new construction. So you're going to have to pull out topsoil and bad soil, or you, or you just possible. Well, when you pour a grade beam, beam, you don't have to do right. near as much right. bad soils. So, but we do have drill right. piers to take it to support the weight of that. Another cost in it too is this is a hardened structure for the safety of the guys in a bad weather event. Gets them out of that little small hut that they have anchored to the ground outside. So they don't have to go outside to get into a hardened structure during a storm. But we're going to use that chief as, as lockers. Gear room, yes sir. Yeah, so try to get multi-purpose out yeah. of it. So yes. And the thought is, is they're not going to be in here much, I'm hoping. That's the key. Um, we made it just big enough to fit the lockers and that you could probably get about eight people in there and they're not going to be comfortable, but yeah. during the tornado. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're in there for a tornado, you'll make it work. Uh, <laughs> that's right. right. If we swap these two, there would be a huge cost increase because of hardening the larger of the two structures. So we tried to make the hard structure as small as we could make it and still fit the crew that is expected to be in that building there. Um, mimic Station 1. Station 1 is the hallway that they did. Yeah. To go back in and do an interior part would have been way more expensive than putting it on the outside. So, anything else we need to ask? Other questions? You said you got twenty thousand dollars in for unforeseen. Unforeseen. That's low. Five percent. Well, I mean, well it's, it's eight hundred forty square feet. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> so I mean, it's not a large structure. Yeah. So and there's no frills in it. So. It is. It is small, but like I said, this is we've got to have to start on the dormitory portion back here. And that plumbing line I was telling you about that comes right through these kitchens, I've got to be able to get them out in somewhere. Um, so I don't, we'll have to work on that next, but this was just kind of step one of getting this station up to where it'll be good for the next 10 to 15 years. And what did you say that uh, the deduct amount was for removing the canopy? 13,000, 318. 318? Yeah, that will take you down to 396, 158. Well, I know, I know I told y'all the other night that we probably would not push this out to council tonight because we that's wanted fine. to at least look it over. And, no, that's fine. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we answered all of your questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That no, that was great. That and was then great. Same thing with email. If anybody wants to go down and see it, all you got to let me know and I'll make sure we, we make that happen. And, and these are estimates by the architect of what we think it's going to cost. Not the no, these no, are hard bids. We opened a bid last Tuesday. We did a bid. Yes, that's right. We had three bidders. Yeah. The bid. All right, thank you, Chief. Uh, that's great. We'll, so we'll carry it over. Yeah. And for a small bid. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is really helpful. So we'll carry it over uh, for further uh, study and go take a field trip this week. All right, good deal. So uh, we'll carry that one over. Uh, moving on, uh, 021024, request for consideration for the city to take over maintenance and service costs for three street lights in the Gatsby subdivision. Uh, and then this one, uh, what, what was the vote from uh, public safety? Is it uh, four to zero to approve that? Do you might remember? Uh, it was not yeah. a public Oh, it was public works. Public, public works, public I'm sorry. Yeah. Public yeah. works, not public safety. safety. I don't remember. It was also so anyway, not it was approved. public works. It just, went, it just came oh, straight to the finance. Oh. oh, I thought it had already been. It was a public works. Oh, well, it was yeah. in public yeah. works. Yeah. And yeah. it got voted somewhere. out. I think it's four to zero out of public works, but I, I just like to know. Uh, okay, so the the cost for the three street lights, as I understand, would be ninety four forty seven monthly uh, for those three street lights. Is that right? Correct. So they're they're actually going to come in and put new streets with posts and everything, all new fixtures, and everything up. Okay, and that's coming Why out of that? seven cent so gas the ones tax. that are out there don't meet their standard height height wise they're one more like a residential home. yeah okay so they're they're gonna okay you know, so alabama powers are standard, placing this right okay what's the cost uh 94 per month per month and that's uh 
that might be coming out of like seven cent mm -hmm. gas tax. Okay. Oh, so, yeah, I think I, yeah. Okay. Um, I would make a motion uh, to approve because we don't have a choice. Um, Second. Yeah. So move to approve. Second. Councilor Alamont. Any other discussion? Thank you, Randy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That is five to zero. Five to zero. Y'all gonna miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I know this is the last, last one. one. <laughs> it's the last one. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm even moving out of my chair. I'm, I'm going to well, move out of the we chair. Are we shifting? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm just going to wander around. Be you know, I don't know. We'll be occupied by him. I, I might know, sit over there in Berkeley. Said, okay. Moving on to new business. Uh, 09 10 24 request to surplus miscellaneous IT equipment. We have Brandon here to. So basically, we would just like. <laughs> it's been riding around and a lot of it's been riding around in Justin's trunk for a while um, stuff that was in the server room that has been taking up space so we're basically just trying to get room for inventory a lot of old monitors old um, access point things that we can no longer use we've pulled the hard drives out of everything that we could pull the hard drive out of so it should be safe to grab those all right well I would make yeah. a motion to approve the um, IT equipment Smith and then Gwaltney, I think you did. Councilor Gwaltney seconded that. Any other questions? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's five to zero that passes. Okay, 10 10 24. Uh, request to set bid date for new police vehicles. And uh, what what was the requested bid date uh, for? Mike, how, how quickly can we do this? Are you going to buy these off state vendors? Or you to we we couldn't them? because they. I, I'd say minimum, at least two weeks. Okay. Yeah. You want to tell I'll them? Tell them. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. So. Um, that would be what? The 18th. Huh? November 18th. Yeah. November 18th. November 18th? Do we just uh, yeah. Yeah. Assuming two weeks will work, that's the 18th. Because um, the city of Montgomery tonight. bought all the ones that were going to be off the bid list <laughs> in advance of the bus. We just Two talked about it. That's the reason I know. Yeah. And the reason we're trying to do this real quickly is because somebody else is trying to purchase these that are available. They're buying out the for them and get them to fall okay. And yeah. they're being even later. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're in Scottsboro or somewhere. Scottsboro. Scottsboro. Um, okay, so that would be November 18th. Are you moving that to uh, yeah. uh, like approve um, or accept the bid date for the yeah. November 18th? Uh, moved by Councilor Smith, second by Councilor Alamon. Councilor Jones. Was that four, I'll say four o'clock that day? Uh, or four thirty, four. Four thirty? I mean four, let's just say four. Four p.m. <laughs> Councilor Smith had a question. Yes. Yes, I was just wondering about um, some of the discussions about the vehicle fleet is about kind of standardizing the makes of the vehicles. Has, is that able to be taken into consideration with, with this, this bid? This is all going through Lester and Blake and JJ. They're working on yeah, that. Yeah, they're to make working sure on all I just want, I didn't know yeah. for sure. So yeah, and then Blake is now kind Thank of, he is, he is centralizing that. He is the one who is selecting those vehicles and making sure that we're getting the right ones. Thank you. Yeah. These have to do with the police vehicles, the Tahoes. I'm sorry, it was two things. Which will also allow us to get an in, a, a complete inventory to keep track of. Great, wonderful. Yeah. Correct. We're going to make all <laughs> Andy Waltney's dreams come true. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, that has been motioned and seconded. Uh, any other questions? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes five to zero. Going to council tonight. 11 10 24. Request to authorize the mayor to sign an IGA with the city of Birmingham. And where's Kale? 
Now he's not here. That's why he met. He and I met so that I could explain. Oh, it okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, we, I sent everything out to everybody. Yes. Yeah, for three today. springs, right? Um, yeah. So this and is the, it's, um, the Christ Church that's in the old um, Salvation, Salvation Army thrift store. Yeah. It's the it's the ditch right there along Green Springs next to the church. And apparently they've been calling about it for like eight months about how bad a shape it's in. And so uh, Berkeley and Kale have been working on it. And I think we had a relatively good idea of what the price was going to be. And then Kale went to the Regional Planning Commission and found their, their maintenance map. And it's actually, according to the Regional Planning Commission, Birmingham's maintenance responsibility. So he went to them to talk to them about paying for it, and they said, we will not. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've maintained that area in the past, because right. that's our road going up through there. Yeah. And we've always done that, 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 that side. Thing in my time here, they, they've always, if you're going toward Birmingham, they've always done the right side, and we've always kind of maintained the left side. So. But they, so and this is they, on the left side. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's right by the church, and so they they worked with they worked with the city, and finally the city, of Birmingham called and said, "We'll split it with y'all." So we need to sign the we need to have Alex sign the agreement um, in order to get reimbursed half of the cost from the city of Birmingham. Can we do that all across the mm -hmm. area? <laughs> right. uh, uh, sure. so the, the money's already been approved. Yeah, y'all have done that. And you're you're pretty much ready to go yeah, to I mean, do they're, they're, it. The contract's just waiting on us to get to go. But again. both mayors yeah. have to sign it. Yes, and and yes. and right now we we do have to adjust the agreement because it currently has the wrong mayor's name on it. Yeah, um, yeah he is, and and, we, we, and he is. But so we're going to go ahead and let Randall sign it first, and then we'll get yeah. the fixed copy to you. So it, the only thing we don't have to have you sign it tonight. We just need to have it approved tonight to be signed, so that we can get our money. On the approval, of Birmingham requires an ordinance. Well, I don't know. It doesn't matter. So you'll probably there'll be an ordinance on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And cool. what is the cost that's being split? Sixty thousand. Yeah, it's a little um, under, I'm like fifty-eight or fifty-nine thousand. They're basically so thirty, 30 on our side, thirty on that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's roughly about that much. Okay. Um, I would make a motion to approve having the mayor sign uh, the IGA with the city. Second. Second by Mr. Hart. Move by Mr. Smith. Um, one question, Mike. So, are you saying we can handle it as a resolution, correct? No. We so, we need to do it as an ordinance. <coughs> also. Okay. So, we'll have to do it as an ordinance. Got it. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Okay. Any other questions? Tell uh, Kale Planning for negotiating. And you too, Berkeley. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Five to zero. That passes. And our last item. 131024, request for consideration of creating a Homewood Beautification Plan uh, from the Beautification Board. So as the Beautification Board liaison, I'll just kind of introduce this item from where it's at. You know, the board presented this uh, back prior to budget. It was included in the budget. So at this point, this is kind of just to put it back into consideration of uh, you know, what the committee would like to see as next steps. Previously, the board had uh, written a scope to kind of craft the initial, you know, project activities and, and, and kind of what the parameters of the plan would be. Um, also identified some consultants who do that type work and talk to them. So really just looking for guidance from the finance committee of what you want to see next, if you want the board to present anything further or if the finance committee members directly um, we'll kind of um, you know, work on it from there. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, because I have a, I have an opinion, but I'm, yeah. You know. So I I think the because it's got to be the city that actually contracts with them. I think we have to go through the formal process, even though the beautification board has already started it. And I think we can. Uh, unless the finance committee wants to change the parameters of what's what we're asking these people to bid on, uh, you can carry the two proposals that we have over, I think, and they don't have to resubmit them. But then you've got to give them, you've got to have some time open to let, and I know there's been discussion about maybe there's a third or fourth uh, group that might be interested in it. So I would suggest that you leave, the, that you just sort of start the, the 
formal process over, but the beautification board's already given you the parameters of what you're doing. And so all, all that needs to be done now is the mechanics yeah. of opening it up for some period of time to, for, to let other groups submit, carry the tube that you've already got over, and then move forward from there. Is there, an, and, is there an RFP? Yeah. I mean, is it in an RFP or? And because it's professional services, there's not a. Yeah, it's not actually bid. It's, it's yeah. not an it's open bid. But, just but there, there was essentially. Yes, there was an RFP yeah. slash you know yeah. request for people to submit a you know a statement of interest to to progress. Um, so there were, as Alex is referencing, there's two who submitted. Then there's a couple more who. Um, we can reach back out to, I think Mary Michael Kelly's already reached back out to them. But um, basically it's just, once they have the information, should they make a recommendation to the committee um, formally through the beautification board and hand it over with a recommendation? Um, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, I, I think since it's the city that's gotta make the decision, I would just have the city consider the proposal. I mean, again, okay. I think the beautification board sort of done the work of saying, this is what we're talking about. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of the proposals that match that and letting the city decide who, which group it wants to move forward with. But I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to, since they've been involved in this process and they've obviously put way more thought and look into it than I have, I would love to hear kind of what their thought process is. I mean, obviously that's not a formal recommendation, but just like from our perspective, looking at who we've talked to and what they're proposing, you know, we Correct. do like this idea. I just don't think we can outsource yeah, yeah, the no, decision-making totally. pro right, process right. to yeah. one of the boards. Yeah, no, so I that's... totally agree. I just do, I would like to hear fe their yeah. feedback. So I'll, ha I'll ask the board to, you know, provide information on the scope and the project <laughs> again, and I'll ask Mary Michael to share the proposals, you know, statements of interest received so that the finance committee can review that. Well, and so okay. if we're going to solicit additional proposals for this work, they would need to go to Bo or to Brian for the website, or how do we disseminate that to interested parties? So, because that, that's my concern is last time there were parties that were interested, so we don't make sure we capture those this time so we're not like starting this process so over multiple times. I would think we'd handle it the same way we've handled other RFPs. So if there's, uh, if we know of a party that's interested, we can send that to them. Okay. Uh, so that they can review it. If there's, and, and by the same token, or at the same time, we can get to put, we can post the RFP uh, on all the city stuff, yeah. website, all of that stuff, so that anyone we're not, that we don't know of that's interested yeah. also has the opportunity yeah. to do it. Link to it. But, it's, but certainly if you know a group, if anyone knows a group that's interested, then there's no problem with, with letting them know what's going on. So right. there is so, an RFP. It's not technically an yeah, RFP. I, I, I this think that's probably a, 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 a little bit of a glorified name for it. But <laughs> like, how, like how, you said you could send that to them. I think, I think, I, I think whatever their what scope of, sort of what they explained to us during it, during budget hearings. Right. Remember, mm -hmm. they but like, in, is it captured in a document? Is it captured in a document? Someone is going to put a proposal. That's what And a deadline. I mean, typical RFP is going to have a deadline when we want the information. But again, it's not an RFP. Okay, right. I can't say this enough. Describe to them what it is that they. You can make it an RFP if you want to. That's up to y'all if you want to do that. Or you can simply. I don't know what the beautification board put together. So I don't know if they just requested this information, requested proposals, or if they actually gave some parameters. My understanding was they gave some parameters of what it would include. Yeah, they did. Could so, you share that with everybody? I mean, that's, they, they, so that, you all not remember No, they do, they I know, but there's nothing, a, it's like, the, right, you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So what I'm saying yeah, exactly is what I'm saying. you get that document from the beautification board with the parameters that the other two have already submitted proposals on, send it out to anyone you want to send it out to, Post it for anyone that we don't know about that's interested. Set a due date. Get the get whatever propo additional proposals there are back, and then you interview those groups or, or talk to them and make a decision. I like what we did. Take with you forward to the entire right. council or whoever right. has that information, right. so we all have it sure. to see. That's what that's what I'm trying to say. Like, no, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm right? saying, we're saying the same thing. Right. Yeah. The beautification board just needs to get that to the council. So how is that going to come to the council? Do you mind sending that to everybody? Yes, I can, and I'll coordinate with Mary Michael to make sure she, as chair, is just kind of 
in the communication loop as well so that yeah. if there's any follow-up she can help coordinate with the board on getting that but I mean this is exactly what we're mm -hmm. hoping to achieve honestly with the item tonight is just kind of like what what does a committee what does yeah. the council want next as so we can progress with the project post budget so thank you so really what the committee is deciding tonight is do you want to see what the beautification board did first or do you want to go ahead and set out a timetable and a timeline for when stuff is going to be submitted mm -hmm. i think we should see it because then we can decide whether we need to do a more formal rfp or not and so we can see That's just fine. does yeah. this suffice or does it need to be meatier yeah. Yeah. and do they did they have any kind of timeline in mind or are they really looking to us to set that timeline well their original timeline was they were hoping to you know, have it in the budget determine a consultant you know in this fourth quarter hopefully with the project starting in quarter one of 2025 I mean that was because that in speaking with consultants that was the available time frame they had and okay. trying to get it on their calendar but okay. I mean obviously we've got to do due diligence first so. yeah sure sure yeah. And, and yeah. this is budgeted it know, is we're budgeted. really just Sorry. talking about logistics so uh, why don't we carry it over and you disseminate the information and then the committee can decide what uh, how we want to if we want to set the dates uh, for additional submissions or we take what what has been submitted already and make a decision is that how does that sound with everybody any objection to that Okay, so we'll carry over 13-10-24, and go ahead and motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Uh, we'll move second. Last motion. All in favor? Second.